huge intentionality. Huge. We knew who we were, we knew where we were going, and we knew how we were going to get there. We rolled it out in the first year, fastest company to go over $100 million. Fastest company to get in the top game of the DSN 100. No other company's ever done like we did that. Got the Bravo Award. Now you gotta think about it. We're here with this company that just came out and did it right. No inventory loading. Giving people their inventory for free. I mean, go talk to the CEOs of the direct sales industry and get them to put their head around that one. Free inventory? And it's actually one of the smartest things we ever did. And I could sit here and go through the whole psychological thing, what it does, but it's just the right thing to do. If you go out there and get in your sphere of influence and you use your relationships that you spent your lifetime building, I didn't spend my lifetime building them, and you go out there and you go to cuss with that person, I should give you another one so you can go do it again. I should force you to give me more money so you can go to your customers, okay? That's the right thing to do. So to do that, and all of a sudden, we're top 100 in the DSN. Here's an industry that's been around 100 years plus, 150 years. Tens of thousands of companies come and gone, and here we are, we're meeting in the top 100. And if you look at all the companies around us, they're all 10, 15 years old. They're all in 10, 12 countries. They all had a huge product line. And we walk in with one product, one country. We do it with integrity, we do it with character. We do not load up the inventory, give people free inventory, and we blow by everybody. You gotta get that, okay? <laughs> So you know, you can say a lot of things, how that happened. We're, we're in a real class space. I love the space we're in. And the space of beauty, anti-aging, anti-aging, $250 billion industry going to a trillion dollars in the next 10 years. Great space to be in, okay? You know, we, we brought in we signed for products. I mean, we just brought in truly a great product that works. We brought in an opportunity. Our opportunity, you know, for us, and I want to talk about it, for me, the opportunity was so much bigger than a product than a comp plan. It's about all the things that we are about making people better. And the, the key thing we had to do on my side, is so the key thing you got to do on your side, is I had to go attract good people. I hope that one thing you see as you meet our management team or if you go to our home office or meet our people who are working here, we attract quality people. We really do. Culture is working for us inside the company as much as culture is working for us outside the company attracting mm -hmm. people like you. At our home office, our people go out and they bring us beautiful people to come and work with us because they believe in our company, how, how we treat them. And guess what? If you come to our company, you're negative, our employees will eat you up and stick you out. Okay? Because we love our people. And they know we love them. And they know that we treat them with respect. And we do a lot of things for them. We're a great company to work for. I think it's the same thing that goes on out there. So we, we, you know, it starts with people or anything else. Like your business and my side. Our management team, I'll put them against anybody. And I mean anybody in the direct sales industry. I'm not talking about just anybody as far as a small company. Anybody in the direct sales industry. I'll put them up against. You're going to hear from Jeff Dahl later on, Roy Truitt. These are real class people. These are good human beings. They're very, very, very smart what they do, but they're very, very good human beings. They have amazing character and amazing integrity. We built real class systems in this company. I mean, what's been going on right now for you as far as systems, nobody's ever done what we've done. And quite honestly, in my opinion, where we are with our systems and our branding and our marketing, as good as it is, I still give it a five on a scale of one to ten. I really do, because I know what we can do, I know what we're going to do, I know what we're working on. I mean, we, and right now, when people look at us, they see us as the, our back office, the best back office out there, think that. Our brand is best. We can do better. We can do better. We're never going to stop doing better. But you know what the big thing we brought in? We brought a rhythm to the marketplace. And I want you to hear all this because this, there, th you gotta understand, we are different than the direct sales industry here in the United States. But when you go outside the United States, it gets even cuckooer, okay? <laughs> because these companies in the United States that didn't do it right, take the models not working here, they take it over there and it even gets worse. And it's wrong. I think if you can't build the United States right, you should not leave the United States. I really believe that. If you've got a good heart, you've got integrity, you wouldn't do that to somebody else. Just because they don't live in your country means you hurt them. So we've taken our time to build it right. We've taken our time to build it right. Now, we've done pretty well sitting here in the United States, okay? But we built a rhythm, and that is huge. In most direct sales, not most, in every other direct sales company I know of, if you went and looked at it, and if you've been involved in the industry, you know this, it's like looking at a quilt. There's this group doing it this way, this group doing it this way, this way. There's the purples and the greens and the oranges. It's a quilt, okay? When you look at Miriam, the United States, it's just one blanket. We have a rhythm. We have a way we share the product, we share the opportunity, we do the training, we do the communication. We have a language about us, we have a culture about us. 
I mean, we are an amazing group of people how we act, we built the rhythm. We could have never did what we did with, with happiness, with acts of happiness, and, and I, believe me, I thank you so much for you did that day, acts of happiness. But that wouldn't happen in most companies, because we had this rhythm in us. What do I mean by that? There's a bond between us. We built something that's very, very unique. That rhythm is one of the most important things we have here. That rhythm is what we're going to take globally. It's what it says, differentiated so much from every other company out there. I've always said, at the very beginning, what I want to happen, you might be in another country, you might not understand a word they're saying, but you'll know exactly what they're saying. That's rhythm, okay? And so when, you, when we talk about going global, it's such a bigger piece. And when Jeff Dahl comes up here and talks about it after, uh, after I talk and the people come and talk about our products, and Jeff Dahl comes to talk about your national, he's gonna talk about what we call the six pillars of being a great direct sales company and all the different things that make up a great direct sales company. Most companies have two, maybe three. I don't know if other company has the six that we have when we're talking about that. It's pretty amazing with this rhythm, we've gone out and we've built the company without playing comp plan games, without inventory loading people, giving uh, customers, I mean, having a, a customer acquisition model, and basically giving people the inventory. I think it's pretty neat. You know, we think about our culture, that wasn't something that just happened accidentally. I mean, we put words out there, but you look at our kit. Our kit, when you open it up, it's about you more than it is about the product opportunity. You look at our real life library, you look at what we did with happiness. These are big, big investments we've done to try and create culture, try and create who we are, an identity. Big brothers, big sisters, trying to teach people how to give is a big part. One thing when you learn in life, when you learn to give, you receive more than you've ever given. That's hard for most people to put their heads around. And we really are a company to start building around purpose and meaning. Purpose and meaning more than product and car plan. And when we did that, that's what's happened here. So with that said, here we are, 31 months into the game, okay? We pretty much made history. Our first share was record. Uh, your number, our numbers will be coming out at the DSN conference here in, what, two weeks? I'm speaking at it again this coming year, in two weeks. And, uh, and we will have the record second year, okay, in the history of the sales industry. And uh, so we're ready to go international, and we've been getting ready. Okay, we've been getting ready, getting ready. And um, for me, it was real important that we slowed down to go faster. Was, for me, it was real important we figured out who we were. For me, it was real important that we were the best we could be in the United States. Now, this doesn't mean the United States is over. <laughs> we could sit here in the United States, I could, we could grow this company together three or four fold. We, I think we'd go to a billion dollar company in the United States alone. I, actually, I know we could do that. I mean, to this day, when you walk into a department store right now, Right now, today, 1,000 department stores all over North America, there's at least 100 people, 50 to 100 people walking in today, and every one of them, buying a product that's more expensive than our product, right? That does way less than our product. We haven't done a darn thing, okay? We could grow this company 100-fold here and still not penetrate the market space here. It's that big. I mean, it's a trillion-dollar market space that's involved in front of us. But as we go out, you know, and and later on today, we hear about the Contour product. The Contour product is going to go cuckoo. I'm really just kind of, we got our own, we're kind of just trying to wrestle with how much should we have stocked in the pipeline, okay? Because wow. you guys are going to knock it out of the park. And uh, they, they, they've done some great work on that. I'm not going to go into it, I got other people come and talk about that. But we're sitting here, a company that's about ready, to, a company that I, in my opinion, is ready to become a multi billion dollar company. And uh, there's no other company I know out there that's ready to do that. So before I start going into what we're going to do, I'm going to give you some history of the industry. Because I feel like I'm a, a student of the industry. I, I'd be willing to sit down with pretty much anybody and debate any company out there, what made it work and what made it not work, okay? Because I really spent a lot of time looking at that. And it's just important to know what to do and it's just important to know what not to do. Quite honestly, there's a whole bunch of people out there teaching you what not to do, okay? And so, but I'm, these companies I'm going to bring up are not, not what to do companies, but there's a lot to learn. For example, there's a company called Mel Luca. Very interesting company. 30 years ago, launched it. Launched around an Australian uh, Jew, so basically an Australian bush. And it's called a Mel Luca plant. Tea tree oil. They started putting out um, personal care products. And they did okay. And then they expanded into services. And that kind of got them going. And they got into skincare, and it really got them going. Then he got into supplements. Now there's a big company. It's huge diversification. They got 300 products. Now if you look at the products, they change a lot. They, they, they go into multiple spaces, multiple verticals, multiple categories. 
Yeah, they move their products around the, uh, in the different uh, countries. They change the formulas. There's a lot of moving variables to them. Look at New Skin, 1984, I believe they started. They're a $4 billion company now. You know, they start out in the skincare industry. But now there's what they say to the people, pick your passion. Because they evolve, they got nutritionals and diets and everything else. But about 50% of their business now is nutritional, not skincare. But everywhere you, you, if you take their products, their home products, and you can follow them throughout the world, and they'll have different titles for them, different names for them, different formulas for them, as they have to change up to this world. So as you see, as you start learning, looking at these companies, as you go around the world, certain things are universal, certain things change a lot. It's a, it's a very regulatory driven world, and in every world has its certain different properties from a business standpoint. For example, in Korea, we have a limitation on how much we can pay out in commissions. So you have to adjust your comp plan. Oh, but wow. the main thing you have to change, like, besides all the regulatory issues you gotta do, and Dennis is a great example of somebody says in 180 countries, you can't do that. Every one of them is different. You gotta go in there, there's regulatory issues, and there's product issues, there's, there's application processes, and it takes a long time to get these things done. Especially on the product standpoint. For example, I'll just give you Canada. You go, you walk into any store in the United States and buy a vitamin K product. Go to Canada, you can't even get it. It's banned. Okay, so if you have vitamin K, you got to you got to change the product around. Go to Canada. There, there's hundreds and not thousands of nuances like that around the world if you take your product out there. So when you look at these companies, you see how they've got to adjust as they go out there. You look at Amway in 1959. They came out called American Way Association. That was Amway. Came out with Frisk, which was a home cleaning product. And they went to Arthrosy. Arthrosy is their skincare line. It got the company exploded. If you go look at artistry around the world, it has all these different variables to it because they had to change it to, to comply. To, they had to change it to make it comply to the rules of all these different countries. Okay, but then they got into Neutralite, which is really forty-five percent of business with nutrition. I, I'm not up here to scare you guys. Say we're going to these other verticals. We're not. But I'm trying to drive up a point. To go international, and do it right, is a very tedious cumbersome process to do it right now you can just throw the doors open and get out there and take a product out there and say you're in business but to go in there apply to the regulatory people get all the licenses done to go in there apply to the to the, the compliance side on the product and get all the go through all their lists and everyone has their hot list and things you can't do and the percentages you can do and make a product that works with that it's a very cumbersome process and so we've been going through that but with that said you know as we're going through this, the biggest thing we still have here, and you hear about it, is our management team. The biggest thing we have here is our systems. As a matter of fact, you guys have a picture of our, our IT example, the IT thing going on? You put that up. Hello. <laughs> Hello, backstage. There you go. This is an example of one, wait, this is what you might call a one off room at Nero. What it means is it's not our main office, okay? On the, on the one side, you see the people sitting around a table. That's a group that gets together every day. And they're, they're, they're the business people in our company. They're business analysts, and, and, and they're the people who operate on the IT side. And they're running a, 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 a program called Agile. Agile is a, is a software operating system that manages coding, okay? And it basically, what this, these, these business people do here, and they're, they're the people who represent the business of our company, they're listening dry 